Thanks for staying with us as we profile Black women and girls who are 21st century history makers. In this segment, women who are trailblazers in sports and medicine, some are household names, while others are newcomers, but their impact will be felt for generations. I want to start with Jackie Joyner. Kersey, retired track and field Olympian, Dr. Namanji Bumpus, director of the Department of Pharmacology and Molecular Sciences at Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine, and Jaya Patillo. She's a 12-year-old viral track star from Beaumont, Texas. And Jennifer King, assistant coach for the Washington football team. I want to thank you ladies for joining us. And I want to remind our audience, we are not taking any phone calls, but please join the conversation using the hashtag HerStoryMakers. That's her story makers. Again, thank you all so much for joining this conversation. Thank you. So let me let, let me start with you, Jackie. Um, it, it says, you know, retired uh, Olympian, but when you first popped up before the show, you, you haven't aged at all. Let me just go say that. You're you're absolutely you you look the same as you were when you were were in the Olympics. Being a being a first for you, did you concentrate on that, or were you just just working on your craft? You know, that's not something I concentrated on. I just did something I love doing, and I did not know that I was good at what I was doing. You know, and my coaches yeah. and everyone. But, you know, being able to see other women uh, gave me the inspiration to, you know, if I work hard, then maybe I can reach the goals that I had set for myself. Hmm. Um, so at, at some point, though, it had to hit you that I have you've done something that that someone else had not done. Uh, when was that for you? When did it hit you? And what did that feel like? Well, I well, being in a multi events is um, challenging as it is the heptathlon, the seven different uh, disciplines, uh, and making going to the Goodwill Games when I had the opportunity to be the first woman to score with seven thousand points because so many said that was impossible to do, but. I never put limits to whatever I was trying to do. So I didn't say I wanted to do this, but then it was like 7,000, you know, seven events. Maybe I could score a thousand points in each event. But then when I started looking at the events and the times to get the points and some events, yes, I could score 1100 points and some of the events I'm not quite there. And I might only could get 700 points. So I had to find that balance and it became a challenge. Uh, me challenging myself to do what others said that couldn't be done, but for me, not to let the noise of the outside stop me from achieving what we, my coaches and all of us, uh, I had put in the training to do. Mm -hmm. I, I want to talk to yet another Olympian, a junior Olympian, Jaya Patillo. She's 12 years old and amazing. Hey, Jaya, how are you? I'm good. How are you? This is, it certainly is an honor uh, to talk to you, young lady. Thank uh, you. You have been clocked at 17 miles per hour in a full out sprint on a, on a treadmill. Do you realize how big of a deal that is? Yes, I do now, for sure. Oh, God. <laughs> But talk, talk to me about it, uh, because you are you are destined to be the first in so many in so many ways. Um, how does it feel to to get all of this attention for your 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 athletic accomplishments at 12 years old? By the way, you just turned 12 in <laughs> December. Right? So you're 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 12.2. <laughs> yes, I think that it's just really crazy and I really appreciate all of the support I've been getting 
And I just would never have expected all of this to happen, or at least not now and not in the way that it did happen. That did happen. And I just, um, I just appreciate everything. And I just can't believe that I'm even here. And I just, um, yeah, that's basically all I can say. <laughs> uh, you are special. And, and you come from great family stock. But as an athlete, do you realize how special you are? Or are you just about the business of being the best you can be? Well, can you say that one more time? I'm sorry. I, I was, no, that's all right, dear. I, I said, you are special. You, you, you are a special athlete at such a young age. Um, do you realize how special you are already or are you only focusing on uh, being the best that you can be? Um, I think that I'm definitely focused on being the best that I can be, but I know that this is something that I'm good at and something that I have a talent in. And I definitely just want to continue doing this and hopefully one day go to the 2024 Olympics. And that's my goal. And I'm already proud of what I have done, but um, I'm just excited to see where I'll go in the future. Jackie, what do you see when you look at this, this shooting star? Oh, I see someone, uh, Jaya, with a lot, a lot of confidence, uh, know where her blessings come from, a person that's committed, uh, uh, have direction, understand the hard work, and she has goals. And she said, Jaya said it best, you know, she wants to go to the Olympics. That was my goal. Didn't know if it was going to happen, but she's already on course to do whatever she sets her mind up to do. Yeah, that I, I want to stick with uh, with the sports theme here and and talk to Jennifer King. She is an assistant coach for the Washington football team. Yet, uh, you know, uh, another big deal. Home team. Um, I, I really, I, I would, I would just say, Jennifer, it's about time. Do you agree? Yeah, I totally agree. Um, you know, it's been a long time coming for me personally and, and also just for women in football. But, um, you know, it's definitely about time. Talk to, talk to us a little bit about your, your specific coaching duties for those who um, are not paying attention to what's happening on the sidelines and only pay atten paying attention to what's on the field. What, what is your craft? Uh, I work with the running backs group with our team. So, um, you know, in preparation, anything that I can do to help us be ready for Sundays and on game days, you know, it's all about locking in and focusing and um, any corrections that we can make to win. That's what I'm all about. So uh, super excited to be here in D.C. Can you talk to me about um, who, who, who's uh, who you're going to? Who you're gonna pick for, <laughs> for the running back crew? I, I'm just messing with you. I know you can't divulge any secrets. Um, <laughs> how have you been received? Oh, it's been fantastic. Um, you know, I worked with a lot of the coaches in Carolina when I was with the Panthers, and um, coming to DC has been great. We have a great young group of guys. The coaches are great, so um, it's been awesome. You know, I haven't had any problems with anything. Uh, the guys know I'm there to help them, and all they want to do is get better. And so it's been a great relationship. How does it feel to have broken uh, the glass ceiling in uh, uh, NFL coaching? Uh, it feels pretty good. You know, I don't think I'll, I'll really understand the magnitude of it until maybe further down the road. But um, I definitely understand it's a big deal. And, you know, I'm happy to be the representation that I didn't have growing up. And I take it very seriously. Mm. I, I, I want to also and I don't want to you know, certainly forget medicine, particularly where we are right now, we are still in the midst of, you know, of a, of a pandemic. And, you know, Dr. Bumpus, you are in a unique uh, position as, as head of pharmacology and molecular science at the School of Medicine at, at Johns Hopkins. Um, that again is a really, really big deal but even a bigger deal, considering where we are right now in the midst of the pandemic. Talk to me about that. Yeah. So in May, when I became director of the department, I was the first black woman to ever lead a department at Johns Hopkins Medicine to ever chair a department. So that certainly was historic. But as you mentioned, we're in the middle of a pandemic. Um, so it gave me an opportunity, though, I think, to be a voice to show that Black people do contribute a lot to science, um, to be a voice to make sure that we're really elevating the cause of making sure that 
any medications we're developing will work for all people, including black people, you know, that we're being considered. So I really think that it was an opportune time to have a platform to try to raise the, the um, visibility of black scientists. There aren't as many of us as I'd like, but we are, we are there. And so I think that it's important to see and it's important for our voice to be there. And for younger folks to know that science is a great and fulfilling and viable option for you. Yeah, that, you know, you, you mentioned something about you know, being, you know, a black person, black woman, when you walk into a room of your colleagues, I, I'm I'm sure that there there may be other people of color there, but they may not be black people. Uh, how does it feel knowing yeah, that most you often are not. first and only? <laughs> yeah, most often there aren't other um, black people. Luckily, my department, you know, we are more diverse, but in general, you know, I'll walk into a boardroom, I'm chairing a meeting, and I might be the only non-white person in that room, um, and I'll be one of few women in general. So it's it's interesting. Um, you know, there is a certain isolation and pressure that you feel. There's a solitude to always being the first and the only. But I really take it as a sense of responsibility, as I mentioned, to make sure that my voice is heard. I feel that I'm, you know, trying to be um, representative and a voice for people that have been historically marginalized in general. So trying to have that voice in science and, you know, voice for all of us. But in addition, I think it is important for people to see me there and to see my competence and my love and talent for science. Um, I think that it does make them think differently about, um, you know, our capabilities and maybe rethink some stereotypes. Gosh, you, you mentioned something that, that really struck me, and I want to share this with some of uh, our other guests. I, I want to go back to you, Jennifer. Dr. Bumpus mentioned pressure. We know that athletes are under a tremendous amount of treasure, pressure, whether it's competing against others or themselves. How do you deal with the pressure, particularly since you are a first? Yeah, it's, it's kind of weird that I don't really feel the outside pressure. You know, I think I've always put a, a lot of pressure on myself just to be great. Um, and it's something that my parents instilled in me to anything you're going to do, make sure you be great at it. And um, you know, the pressure that I do experience is making sure our guys are the best that they can be when it's time to perform. And, you know, that's really the only pressure that I felt. Um, it's a big pressure just because winning is everything in the NFL. But, um, you know, it's a lot of pressure to make sure they're, they're ready to go on Sundays. But that's that's pretty much the only pressure I feel. You know, I in watching football, you you see the coaches when things go wrong. On, on the field and the players come off and, and whether it's a head coach or an assistant coach and they're in each other's faces. Um, have you had chance to, to be in a position where you've had to, you know, to let someone that you're coaching kind of have it after making a mistake? Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of the, the calm coach. So I think after mistakes <laughs> and, and after things happen, I'm, I'm more making sure that we can focus on, on what's the next play and not dwell on what just happened. Cause we'll have time to do that after the game. But I think in game, it's so important to get their mind focused on the next play and, and get over what mistake that they just made. Jaya, do you feel pressure right now? And if so, how do you deal with it? What kind of pressure do you feel? Jaya, did you hear my question? Oh, I didn't hear that, sorry. I was. At, we were talking about pressure and you're an athlete. Do you feel any pressure uh, to, uh, when you are when you are competing and and even when you're not competing and what if you are what does that feel like well i do feel pressure sometimes but i know that i'm doing this cuz i want to do it and i don't feel too pressured about anything but um it it doesn't really get to me that much mhm live a little longer you know <laughs> Because <laughs> I know Jackie will tell you that there is all kinds of pressure, not only the pressure of, of being an athlete, but, you know, Jackie, yeah. let, let's, let's be honest. Did you feel that you may have been carrying the weight of women and the race on your shoulders at some point? You know, I never felt that. And I can relate to what Jaya is saying, because I think that when you're in it, you're in it and you're in it to be the best. A lot of times it's the pressure outside of your, what you consider your norm. And 
because you train so hard, you 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 want to perform well, but then after it's all over, I know for me, I felt like, oh, that was the pressure they were asking me about. But when I'm in it, I'm not in a press conference like, oh yeah, I feel the pressure. <laughs> I got to execute. I got to get the job done. And I think that for for Jaya, you know, you you enjoy what you're doing. You love it. Each day you show up for practice. Now on the outside, uh, when I say the outside from like coaching perspective, is that it's a little bit tougher because it's pressure, but it's an anxiety that you want to see your players or your athletes perform well. And there's nothing you could do about it. You know you have helped them to get there, but now are they going to execute? And that kind of pressure there, I mean, is really tough because I sit on the sideline, my husband coach, and we're trying to make sure our athletes are ready. I can't get out there and run for them. But, Lord, I don't know. As a coach, it's tough. Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> Jennifer, you're, you're kind of chuckling. You want to add on to, on, add on to that? Yeah, she, she's absolutely right. I mean, you prepare and prepare, but once they take the, the field or, you know, that, that stage to perform, um, you have very little control, if no control, over what happens. So you just have to make sure your preparation is on point. Yes. <laughs> Dr. Bumpus, talk to me about performing. For you, it's a different kind of performing. It's not an, it's not athletics, but we are talking about life or death and health and wellness. Do you feel the pressure to perform? Do you feel the weight of the race sometimes when you are the only one? wherever you go. I certainly feel a pressure to be excellent. I mean, as you mentioned, I'm working on medicines. My, you know, the things that I do in my lab influence the way that, you know, certain drugs are prescribed and influence, you know, the package insert, the information that we get with drugs, how drugs are used, what we can use them for. So I do feel that I have to be excellent. The people that work with me, I have to be an excellent coach in a way, teacher and mentor to them so that they're you know, doing really well. Um, but for me, I do think um, I feel a sense of responsibility. You know, mm. I feel like we're pushing back a little bit on the word pressure. So maybe not pressure, maybe a sense of responsibility, certainly, that I want to do well because I want to create opportunity for other people. I don't want to be the only black woman department chair of a pharmacology department in the whole U.S. very long. I want to bring other people along with me. So I think it's a sense of responsibility, I feel. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with that responsibility? What does what does that feel like uh, day to day? Are there do you search for opportunities to be on the day in day out work to really to really shine and say this is this is not just for me. This is for us. Yes, I do. Um, so around COVID, for instance, I love participating in community calls, whether it's Baltimore or D.C. where I live having community calls just to answer questions for folks about, you know, how does the vaccine work, for instance, you know, what, how do the medications work? I really love that connection. They can see someone like them, you know, someone who's, you know, come from the same place, I'm um, having a real conversation about the science. But in addition, I do things, I try to mentor a lot of young black women. I mean, young people in general, the young black women, I have dozens that are undergrads, graduate students in science, young faculty, that I spend time with and talk to and try to encourage and you know let them learn from my experiences. Mm -hmm. Jennifer, have you ever taken the time to to sit back and and say, look at what I've done? I mean, just in those in those quiet moments. And and if you have, what what is that like? Talk to me about that. Yeah, I think for me, it's uh, it's more of that look where I where I am, you know, and for some reason that comes a lot um, pregame, you know, during the national anthem, just because, you know, everyone's lined up and I don't know, you know what's about to happen. And um, yeah, I just think to myself almost every game how thankful I am to be where I am and also, you know, look where I look where I am. Like I'm looking across at some of the best coaches and athletes in the world. And, and I'm standing right here with them. And it's um, definitely a special moment for me. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, you have the title assistant coach. Um, when do you think at some point for you that the assistant will drop? 
and and and, and it could be added as as a head coach. What what would something like that mean not only for Jennifer King but the other Jennifer Kings that come behind you? Yeah, that would be a huge moment for for women in football and women in sports and just women in general. Um, you know, whoever is first, whenever that may come. And, um, you know, I think the best way for me to be prepared for that moment is to be the best coach where I am right now. Um, and I'm a firm believer in that. And that's why, you know, I'm focused on getting better every day and um, learning as much as I can and, and to build my resume. So, um, you know, hopefully that day comes, one day I'll be prepared. Mm, indeed. So you are definitely uh, on your way. To, to preparing for that. And again, you know, we certainly salute your achievements. Um, Jackie, as you, as you, you've looked back, you've had, you know, these great Olympic achievements, but as you move forward and, and you, and there's still time in, in sports, where do you think the next glass, glass ceiling breaking is going to be? Uh, I would say I do the multi events called the heptathlon, mm -hmm. and the women have been fighting so hard to try to turn it into the decathlon. And uh, and and for a while, you know, I was somewhat against it, but then in my mind, I was like, why would I wouldn't want uh, a young girl or to have that opportunity of doing the decathlon. So, mm -hmm. and I and I think from that's on the field, but then uh, off the field is that women can be in more uh, decision-making positions where even what Jennifer is saying, I love what she was saying, because I think in order to be a great leader, you have to be a, a great follower. And to be a great assistant coach, then the eyes on you would, would know that wow you you ready to be that head coach you know mm -hmm. and so in sports in general for me i've always just used it as a uh i i would say an opportunity to do what my heart and desire was always to go back into the community of my hometown of east st louis and trying to inspire a generation to be the best that they can be when others said that what I was doing was impossible to do, I'm Indeed. trying to help them say the impossible is probable. Real quick, ladies, uh, I only have a few minutes left. I want to give you each 30 seconds. I'll start with you, Jaya. What is the best advice that you could give to a girl who wants to do what you're doing? Um, to not worry about what race you are or what age you are and to just focus on what you're doing and not worry about what other people are saying that could be negative and only focus on the positive things and focus on um, getting where you want to get to. Excellent. Well, well said. Uh, Jennifer, your best advice for um, women or girls who want to follow in your footsteps? Um, you know, learn as much as you can. Be prepared for that moment that you want. Um, make sure when you get an opportunity to live out your dream that you're ready to receive it and um, be willing to be so good at, that they can't deny you because you're a female. Mm, indeed. Uh, this, is, this is just a, such a great group. Uh, Jackie, your best advice for, for women or girls who are you know, watching this and are looking for inspiration? My advice would be to always believe in yourself and never give up. And even when you think you have made it, you have to always know you have to continue to work hard. Mm. Uh, and uh, and Dr. Bumpus, uh, I'll, I'll give you an extra minute or so. But uh, when when you're looking at uh, women and girls, you know, young academics uh, who are coming up and and looking to to follow in your footsteps, how would you um, advise them? What would you want to tell them about getting here from there? Yeah, I would say be who you are, exactly who you are. Don't feel or be willing to shrink yourself or diminish yourself for anybody. Um, go for what you want. You know best what you're capable of and what you want to contribute to the world. And I think importantly, don't internalize other people's opinions about what you can and can't do. They don't know you, you know you. So don't internalize it, just go for what you want. 
I was going to say, you said, those were a lot of don'ts. Can you give me a do? <laughs> do. Go for what you want. <laughs> go for what you want and be yourself. <laughs> be uh, would, would all of you ladies agree with, with being yourself, being your best self? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Be who you are. Right. And, and 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 if I and if I can in this last minute, and this is you know, let me just say for for this uh, young star, what would you each like to briefly say to to Jaya? Just uh, just just an encouraging note, uh, Jennifer, real quick. Um, just continue to to work hard and go for whatever you want, and stay focused, and, and don't listen to anyone on the outside of your circle. Jackie. Jaya. Enjoy what you're doing. Have fun. There you go. And Dr. Bumpus. You're inspiring us. You have the whole world ahead of you. You're inspiring to me. Thank you. Jaya, thank you so much. Uh, you are certainly an inspiration you know, to me. I'm a dad girl. And so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very, very proud of you. And I'm indeed proud of all of our guests who have participated in this great conversation. Uh, her story, Today's Black Women, Shattering the Glass Ceiling, make no mistake, the world is seeing what many Black girls and women have long known. For them, not even the sky is the limit. I'm Harold Fisher. Good night. <laughs>